G3 hasn't played a single snap this season, but that Robert Griffin cloud continues to hover over Washington. But Redskins coach Jay Gruden gave Kirk Cousins another vote of confidence, and here's what he said earlier this week. Kirk gives us the best chance to win. Still, I want to see him fight through this. That's going to be the making of a strong person, a strong football player. I'm excited to see him bounce back and have a big bounce back game this week and the coming weeks. We'll see how it goes. All right, so Coach Gruden made those comments on Monday. And then on Wednesday, listen to what ESPN NFL analyst Ryan Clark had to say about Gruden's treatment of Cousins versus RG3. The way he's protecting Kirk Cousins, that's how you take care of a quarterback. Whether it's right or wrong, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to fall on the sword for him. But it only magnifies the way he treated RG3. It only makes that even more glaring of a difference in the way that I treat a guy who I want to play, who I'm backing 100% fully, and a guy that I don't want to. So where RG had his negatives and had his wrongs. I think you also have to look to Jay and their relationship issues as another reason why it was hard for him to succeed. Wow, really interesting. But going back to Gruden's comments, Stephen A. Smith, what are your thoughts? Well, listen, I've been saying this for quite a long time. I mean, you know, Skip will validate that. I, I was, I was, I've been talking a long time about how uh, Jay Gruden's treatment of, of, of RG3 uh, was a bit suspect, to say the least. I mean, I'm not sure. I think I remember reading correctly. If I remember correctly, Kirk Cousins actually trained with John Gruden this, the, the, this summer. I don't know. You know, Jay's brother, obviously, a man that works here, the voice of Monday Night Football. Don't know whether that, that's definitively true or not, but Jay Gruden clearly has his preference, and that preference clearly really isn't RG3. Now, I have been on the record and saying on many, many occasions that to some degree, RG3 brought some of this upon himself. Uh, he didn't go about the business of ingratiating himself uh, with his teammates, particularly the first couple of years, team activities, team events. Uh, he, you know, he was a no-show on several occasions. He didn't seem to vibe with a lot of guys sort of feeling himself, the RG3 brand, and he may have done some things to hurt himself, but that might have been just, just youth, just ignorance, and then as he grew older, got a bit more wiser, uh, tried to mend the error of his ways, but he didn't deserve the kind of treatment uh, that he was getting from a few people, especially a Jay Gruden. I have been on the record and I have emphatically stated this on many occasions, Skip, and I will reiterate it again. I put the blame primarily at the doorsteps of Jay Gruden because I believe Jay Gruden got the job as head coach of the Washington Redskins by marketing himself as somebody who could fix whatever issues involved John, you know, uh, um, RG3 mm -hmm. at the time of the Mike Shanahan era. That's how he got the job and then ultimately got the job and jumped ship on RG3. If you listen to how he talked about RG3 when RG3 was practicing, when RG3 was playing, it seemed to be excessively cruel, beyond the pale, and completely and utterly unnecessary, particularly when you juxtapose that to his support of Kirk Cousins, which to me to this very day is inexplicable. Kirk Cousins is an interception waiting to happen. Kirk Cousins is anything but a winner. They were ready to throw a parade in D.C. when Kirk Cousins won a game a few weeks ago. I think it was against the Philadelphia Eagles when he won and connected with Pierre Garçon for that 23-20 victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. It was sort of, a, you know, like a resurrection. I, said, I don't even want to call it a resurrection. I don't know if it was an epiphany, whatever the word you want to use. Nobody expected Kirk Cousins to come through. Yet week after week after week, we see Jay Gruden speaking up for this guy, no matter what mistakes he makes, no matter how many games he cost them, no matter how flagrant and visible the reality is that the Redskins are devoid of a quarterback. RG3 ain't going to be there. Kirk Cousins damn sure don't need to be there as a starter. They need a new quarterback in the nation's capital. Kirk Cousins clearly ain't the answer. At least his resume has validated that thus far. And I totally agree with what our man Bomani Jones for ESPN has said about the whole Kirk Cousins saga. He's absolutely on the money because it is mind-boggling. It's one thing to sit up there and to see RG3 be recognized as somebody who's not the future of this franchise. It is another thing entirely for Jay Gruden to act like, oh, we have our quarterback for the future, and his name is Kirk Cousins. It is mind-boggling how this man who is supposed to know so much about football, all right, could come to that conclusion because I don't know anybody else who has seen that. 
But clearly, Jay Gruden believes he's seeing something everybody else hasn't seen, or he's just using Kirk Cousins to sit there and continue to dig the proverbial grave of RG3. It's sad, but it's a reality that has been pointed out accurately by Mamani Jones and others. It is undeniable what Kirk Cousins has not done. And I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking on behalf of a whole bunch of people in the nation's capital who have verbally expressed identical seg uh, sentiments to what I just elocuted. Mm. I am so with everything you just elocuted. But here's our problem. In no way am I able to or will I try to defend the performance of Robert Griffin III on the field right. post injury, post first knee surgery. Yeah. We can't. You, you, you even less than, than yeah. I. And I love That's RG3 right. as a player. As a player, I loved him coming out. And you pointed out early in the show, he wrecked his knee and it seemed to wreck much of his confidence. He, he never seemed to to get comfortable cutting, pushing off that knee again. And it led to this injury, which led to that injury, which led to this injury. And he's been a mess since then, both psychologically and physically. So th this is a tricky question for me because I still believe Robert Griffin III can play in this league at a very high level. I just don't believe it's going to be in D.C. So I was hoping they would cut him loose before this season started because I have told you from the start, Kirk Cousins will throw interceptions in bunches. He has ability. He has capability. He does know their offense. He's a better fit for their offense than Robert is given what Jay Gruden wants to do with Kirk Cousins. But Kirk Cousins is not the long-term answer. He's wildly inconsistent. He can have that last-ditch drive to beat the, the Eagles. And then you know what will come next. Interceptions in bunches. So I disagree with Jay Gruden just as I disagreed with the great Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan loved Kirk Cousins also, which is why he pushed to take him in the draft even before they, they wanted to go up and get RG3, as you recall, before that draft. And he went ahead and drafted him later. So we had the two rookie quarterbacks, and it just set up problems for this franchise going forward. So my point to you is what, what Jay Gruden did last year to Robert was, I, I loved your phrase, it was excessively cruel. And now it looks laughably sad given how he continues to overly defend Kirk Cousins to the point that last week he said, well, it was windy out there today in trying to defend Kirk Cousins' intercept. Pathetic. It was windy out there. That's just flat out rock bottom pathetic. But, but as r our, our friend Ryan Clark said, that's what you're supposed to do for your starting franchise quarterback. You're supposed to defend him when he has well, a rock bottom game. That, that's what you have to do to keep his confidence propped up. But, well, but last well, year he yeah, was, go, oh, go ahead. Well, well, let's be clear. You are supposed to come to the defense of your quarterback. Yeah. But you're supposed to utter you're, you're supposed to utter things that are plausible, that make sense, that, elite, that 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 allows us to sit up there and say we can understand that. When you're blaming your quarterback's uh, putrid performance on the wind and weather conditions, you know when everybody else has to deal with it, it's just pathetic. That's number one. Number two, the Redskins are two on four on this season. The two victories that they've had, Kirk Cousins hasn't thrown an interception. All four losses they've had, Multiple. he's had two interceptions yeah. in each yeah. of their four losses. Yeah. That's number two. Number three, and we didn't, it, listen, we have to go here. You know, when Bamani Jones was interviewed by the Washington Post, when he said what he said on the air, and people were, were, were you know, talking about it, the Washington Post even had to bring up the issue of the black quarterback. Why? We thought we were beyond all of this. We thought we were beyond the days, you know, uh, of thinking about uh, a Warren Moon being pushed out the door for Cody Carlson or, 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 or the or days questioning Randall Cunningham and what he was going to be able to do or Doug Williams and whether or not he could lead a team to a Super Bowl. The list goes on and on. We thought we were beyond this black quarterback issue. Un unbeknownst to him, Jay Gruden has forced the subject to be revisited, and it has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on on the field. It has everything to do 
with how he's willing to treat one quarterback yep. compared to another. Okay. Because if RG3, when RG3 made these mistakes, yep. you saw how Jay Gruden talked about him. Well, but yeah. Kirk Cousins makes these mistakes. Oh, it's going to be all right. I mean, it's the weather, it's the wind. He's okay. a good guy. He works very hard. We, we believe in him and blah, blah, blah. So it's not really about the performance. When you talk about, because you got to remember, as you know, because you were covering sports long before I was, Skip, the plight of the black quarterback did not just entail an on-field performance. Nope. It, uh, it, it entailed how receptive individuals were to giving you a chance. And when you came to work every day looking to play that position as a black man, yep, I agree. were they receptive to you? Or were you playing in a hostile environment? Mm -hmm. We didn't think about that for quite a long time. Yep. Now Jay Gruden has forced us to, to revisit it just because of the manner and the degree in which he has gone to supporting I hear Kirk you. Cousins. That might be unfair to some people, but they ain't on the other side of this. We're watching RG3. We know he's played sorry. We know he hasn't been the same since his injury. Nope. We know all of this stuff. Yep. But the attacks that have come his way yep. seems to be disturbingly excessive. Yep. And the only defense that I had, the only defense Jay Gruden has is Jay Gruden could actually make the argument that it's not just him. It's RG3's teammates. Yeah. You know, I got because it. some of them feel that way. That is a legitimate argument Jay Gruden has, but it's the only one. Other than that, everything seems to be a bit excessive. I mean, coming to Kirk, I mean, listen to him talk about Kirk Cousins. My God, you would think Kirk Cousins is Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. You're you're right. Yep. I, listen, I, I am also disturbed about the issue you raise about the black quarterbacks. Obviously, I'm not black, but I'm disturbed because I covered James Shaq Harris with the Los Angeles Rams. I know that's way before your time when he was trying to break through. And then I, I did a long piece and spent a week with Doug Williams when he was at Grambling, as he's talked about when he's been on our show with, with us before. So I, I have some feel for that, some feel for it. And I don't like the feeling I'm getting in this circumstance because remember what he did, and I'm going to paraphrase. Remember after one of RG3's worst performances last year, remember what Jay Gruden did? He began to pick it apart by saying he took a one-step drop when it should have been a three and a three-step drop when it should have been a five, and he read only one side of the field too many times. He shredded the performance. He picked it to pieces. And given the way he props up and defends Kirk Cousins to a fault, I, I'm with you. It, it's just it, it, it's disgusting to me, and, and it gets worse by the week. Go ahead. It is, discu it is disgusting. But let's be fair to Jay Gruden in this respect. This is no Chip Kelly situation. Okay. You got yep. Chip Kelly and you got players coming out yep, that's true. And, and directly pointing a finger at Chip Kelly in that regard months ago. All right. That's not what we're talking about here with Jay Gruden. What we're talking about here with Jay Gruden is the flagrant level of favoritism. Yep. On a personal level, he seems to be showing to Kirk Cousins compared yeah. to RG3. Right. But that's entirely different than what Chip Kelly went through in Philadelphia. Yeah. In right. fairness and look, to Jay bottom, Gruden, bottom we need line, to say that. Bottom line, to be fair to Jay Gruden, it, it looks to me like, for, for sure, he just doesn't think Robert can play. Period. End of story. That's right. Like, well, that's right. Just to that's give you right. a little that's perspective right. on how messy Kirk Cousins has been so far this season, he's the first Redskins quarterback to throw multiple interceptions in four of the team's first six games in over 60 years.